to talk about the word pest, not pets. It's so close, yet not close at all. A big difference between pets and pests is that pets you want in your house. Like you might have a dog or a cat or maybe a hamster and you feed these animals, you want them in your house, maybe even a goldfish. So some people like to have pets in their house or their apartment. So cats, dogs, goldfish, pests are the opposite. They are animals you do not want in your house. And you might even try to kill them to get rid of them. We will talk about that phrasal verb in a minute to get rid of pests are the opposite of pets. You do not want pests in your house or your apartment. Now, how about this? Sometimes little kids are called pests. Maybe they are bothering or bugging their parents. Maybe their parents have to get some work done and the kids want attention. Mom, look at this. Watch me jump. Dad, look at this. I'm busy. I'm working. You are being a pest. Stop pestering me. You might hear that. It's another way to say bothering me. Oh, my little brother is pestering me. For example, you might hear this. Stop being a pest, Brent. Maybe when I was younger, my parents said that to me. Stop being a pest, Brent. But as some of you know, I was the perfect child. I never gave my parents any problems. I was a parent's dream. Every parent in the neighborhood said, I wish Brent was my son because he is just so perfect. True story. True story. So I was never a pest. Never a pest. Just don't ask my brothers or sisters, please. I have one brother and one sister. I think I, think I was pretty perfect. The next one, cockroaches. This is one of the pests that I hate most. When Jamie and I were in college, we lived in an apartment in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Yes, that is a real city. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And we had cockroaches in our apartment. I did not like them. I did put a picture of three, hang on, hang on, three dead cockroaches because my favorite kind of cockroach is a dead cockroach. Sorry if you are a cockroach lover, if you are a big fan of cockroaches, I don't like them. I think most people know the word ant. That might be one of the first words you learn when you are learning English, at least in the first year. But did you know a group of ants is called a colony in English? Now, I really respect ants. They're very strong. I think they can lift five times their body weight. They work together. I really, really respect ants. I really like it when ants are outside. I don't like it when ants come inside my house, which sometimes happens. Sometimes in the spring, I have ants. In my house. So the house that I live in right now, in the spring, once it gets warmer around here, the ants come out. Good English phrasal verb. The ants come out and sometimes they will come inside my house. And of course, I'm not proud of this, but to get the ants out of my house, 
I do sometimes kill them. What about this? Now, luckily, I have never had bed bugs. But if I did, I think that would be my worst experience. Let's talk about what bed bugs are. A bed bug is a very tiny insect that likes to live in beds and bite people while they sleep. Yeah, they live in beds. They pretty much live everywhere. They also have very flat bodies so they can crawl into small spaces. They sleep during the day. They come out at night when people are sleeping and they could bite you. I don't think it feels very good. Now, they are often called the color of a penny. So we sometimes say they are the color of a penny. They are copper colored. And if you don't know what a penny is, there's one on the screen that is a coin in the United States. It's actually our smallest coin. It is only worth one cent. So it takes 100 cents to make a dollar. But if you are looking at little bugs and you wonder, oh no, is this a bed bug? Well, one reason to tell it's a bed bug is that it is the color of a penny. It's copper colored. So they look almost the same color. See that color? It's like brown, but we might say copper. And that penny is also copper colored. Copper is a metal in English. It's that color. Copper, almost like bronze in English. The next term I would like to teach you, creepy crawlies. So I think most of the animals we have talked about so far could be called creepy crawlies. You can call all bugs that make you feel creepy, you can call them creepy crawlies. Bugs like, like that right there. I don't even know the names of some of those bugs. We might call them beetles. It's just a good term for any small bug that looks like that. You know, that's not a bed bug. That's not a cockroach. That's not an ant. You can just say it's a beetle, yeah, some kind of beetle. But why do we say creepy crawly? Well, I've got a sentence for you. Let me read that sentence. All these little bugs can be called creepy crawlies. But what about crawl? That is the verb we use for babies before they start to walk. We might say, oh, that baby's crawling. Yeah, when are they going to start walking? In between not moving at all and walking like adults do, babies go through a phase where they crawl. And if you look at that picture, that baby is crawling. A fly swatter, fly swatter. I don't have a picture of a fly. Well, he's actually right down below there, but I figure most people know what flies are, but sometimes you can buy a fly swatter and that will kill the fly that might have gotten in your house. Last night, when I was sitting on the chair, there was a fly buzzing around me. I did not kill him. He wasn't bothering me that much. He wasn't pestering me that much. I let him live. He may still be inside my house. I don't know where he is, but he wasn't bothering me. I didn't want to kill him. But let's look at a sentence where I use SWAT. And I will show you what that looks like. Oh, gross. There's a bug crawling on me. You might swat it away. Swat. The verb, it means something like this. You might say flick as well. Just like, ah, get it off me. Swat it. Swat it. And we also have fly swatter. Now, rats and mice can be called vermin vermin or rodents. 
you might hear that. If you hear vermin or rodents, it's probably mice and rats. There are a couple other animals like that, like um, moles, which you don't hear very often, but those type of animals with the, with the little noses and the beady eyes and the long tails. They are rodents. And if you want to get mice or rats out of your house, you might use a mouse trap. And if you have rats, you might get something bigger than a mouse trap, which we call a rat trap. Put a little piece of cheese on the trap. Hopefully the mouse comes to eat it and then whack. No more mouse. Yeah. It's a little cruel, but it does help you get mice out of your house. The next one here. These guys, red squirrels. I wanted to mention them because, well, squirrel is hard to say. So maybe if I say it a few times, squirrel, squirrel, these guys, red squirrels. Let's get a sentence here. Red squirrels can be very destructive. They can chew holes in the roof and destroy the inside of your house or your apartment. You know, when you have a light and there are wires, yeah, they will chew through wires. They can be very destructive. They can destroy things. Destructive is the adjective. They can be destructive and destroy is the verb. They can destroy your house. Cockroaches really can't destroy your house. They can eat your food. Um, bed bugs can destroy your body because they eat things, eat you, eat your skin, bite your skin. Do they eat blood? What do they eat? Blood or skin? I think blood, blood. Yeah, because I've seen bed bugs will bite people and they turn from copper to red because of the blood. These next things. So there are a bunch of animals in English like wasps, hornets, bees, yellow jackets. A lot of times I can't tell the difference between these animals. So in the picture, it might actually be a yellow jacket, but they could be hornets. Probably not bees, maybe wasps. The way I think of it, wasps are the biggest and then hornets and bees. I like bees because they help pollinate plants. They help plants grow. And I think hornets and wasps do too, but it hurts when they sting you. When one of these animals hurts you, it's what we use in English. We use the word sting. So, ouch, I think a bee just stung me. So it's an irregular verb. Sting, present tense. Past tense, it becomes stung. Oh no, I hope that bee doesn't sting me. Ouch, I think that bee just stung me. Now this, hornet's nest. This almost looks more like a wasp nest because it's so big, but that's what we call where animals like this live, nests. Just like a mouse, actually. A mouse lives in a nest too. A bird lives in a nest in English. But yeah, that looks like a wasp's nest. Try to say that. Wasp's nest. Pests. That S is not easy, is it? Make it a little bigger. That's where hornets live. That's where wasps live. The next one we are going to talk about is nasty. It's an infestation. What the heck is that? An infestation. If you have an infestation, you might need professional help. An exterminator is an expert who is able to get rid of pests. 
I might read that again because we have some terms we need to talk about. Get rid of, exterminator, and infestation. So if you have an infestation, that means you have a lot of something. So if you have an infestation of ants, lots and lots of ants. I don't think in the spring I have an infestation of ants. I have a few here or there. I have heard of people who have an infestation of red squirrels. It can really damage their house. Not fun at all. Let me read that again. If you have an infestation, you might need professional help. An exterminator is an expert who is able to get rid of pests. This is what an exterminator looks like. They get all the gear. And it looks like they have some very powerful, probably poison, to get rid of the pests. And then get rid of. Let's talk about get rid of. So this is a very helpful phrasal verb to know, to get rid of. To get rid of is a phrase that means to remove or throw away something you don't want or need anymore. If you look at that picture, it looks like there's some old furniture there. Maybe an old appliance or two. Maybe they don't work anymore. Maybe the clothes are too small. Maybe the children have outgrown the clothes. Sometimes when Americans want to get rid of things, they have something called a garage sale. So you might have a garage sale to get rid of stuff you no longer want. Soon, there will be a lesson on the channel at a garage sale. Yeah, one of my friends had a garage sale. I asked her, hey, her name's Christy. Hey, Christy, do you mind if I come over and film an English lesson at your garage sale? She said, sure. So I went over there. She was trying to get rid of a few things. Spoiler alert, I bought a guitar, $2 guitar. She was trying to get rid of a guitar. If you have old clothes, you no longer wear, you can get rid of them by donating or throwing them away. All right, hey, look at this one. Another picture of a mouse trap. I wanted to put this one here because that mouse actually looks kind of cute. Who thought a mouse could be cute? I do have some friends that they have mice as pets. They don't think of them as pests. They keep them in a cage. But so a mouse could be a pet if you take care of it in a cage, or it could be a pest if it's living inside your wall. If you stir up a hornet's nest, you say something that gets a lot of people upset and arguing with each other. It is often a controversial topic. Things that are controversial, politics, religion, that's why I try not to talk about religion or politics on the channel. If I did, I think it would stir up a hornet's nest. 